So everything sounds like doom and gloom, but it's not. Okay, you and I can address a lot of these issues. Yes, agriculture uses a lot of water, but they don't use all of it. And there's regulations kind of reducing the amount of uh, chemicals that agriculture is releasing. But agriculture is not releasing plastic pollution. Agriculture is not releasing lead uh, and flushing batteries and whatnot. A lot of that's on you and I. So let's explore some of the different solutions to a lot of the different water pollution problems that we we're talking about. So the first thing we can do is reduce the amount of nutrients that we are wasting and releasing into the environment. So for example, I mentioned one of the ways that we introduce nutrients is through soaps. Our laundry detergents, disc detergents, car wash soaps, there are nutrients in them, phosphates. Phosphates kind of do the scrubbing action of our soaps. So if we start purchasing products that don't have phosphates in them, that means we are not releasing phosphates into the environment. Now you might be thinking, well, they go to a wastewater treatment plant, like it doesn't matter if I use them. And you're right to a degree. But that wastewater treatment plant doesn't get rid of all the phosphates and all the nitrates. It gets rid of a lot of them, but not all of them. It can't be. It can't do it 100%. So you and I can do our part by just reducing the amount of you know, chemicals in that waste. Related to car washes, if you are washing your car in your driveway, you should use a phosphate-free soap because in your driveway, where is that chemical going? Into the storm drain. And where's that storm drain going? Into the environment. So it's actually environmentally better to go to a car wash because car washes are hooked to the sewer system and they have an MPDES. So they typically clean the water a little bit before it even goes into the sewer system to actually be cleaned. But if you're washing it in your driveway, whatever soap you're using is directly entering the environment. What's really cool about living here in Maryland, as well as like 18 other states, is that phosphates are actually banned in the use of disc detergents. So you can go to any grocery store and at least with disc detergent, you will only find phosphate free ones. However, that's not all our products. Our laundry detergents still have phosphates in them. So you can try to purchase brands that don't have those chemicals. Also related to nutrient reduction is related to our food waste. Now, most of your food waste probably goes in the trash can, but you know it should go into a compost. But at the very least, put it in the trash can. Don't put it down your garbage disposal. Yes, when it gets to the wastewater treatment plant, they'll treat it and they'll get the nutrients out and all of that. But we should reduce that load. It's better going into a landfill, at least, because in the landfill, it'll break down and it'll collect there or it'll get incinerated like we do here in Montgomery County. So the biggest thing is just don't put your food waste down the garbage disposal. Uh, yes, if there's crumbs and stuff, that's one thing. But if you're like, oh, I'm just going to put all my eggshells into the sink. My parents do that. It drives me crazy. Don't put it in the trash. So that's for nutrient reduction. When it comes to other stuff, other chemicals, yes, we have wastewater treatment plants. They cannot handle every kind of chemical. They handle the big ones, they handle nutrients, they handle heavy metals, but things like motor oil, it, it kind of gets treated, but not all the way. Things like paint, pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals aren't even cleaned at all. It, they might come out in the other processes, but that was because we were lucky, not because we designed a process to get rid of pharmaceuticals. So for these things, dispose of them correctly. We talked about that a lot in class. So for example, you know, motor oil and paints should be going to the Shady Grove transfer station. Medications, uh, do not flush them. Um, you really shouldn't throw them in the trash either. You can, and it's definitely a better alternative. They actually should go to a police station. Police station have prescription not buybacks, uh, take backs, and they, um, usually get incinerated. And so it's just more environmentally friendly because these kind of chemicals in our pharmaceuticals really shouldn't get into the environment. I also put wet ones on here because I went to a wastewater treatment plant and they said the number one thing that they wish people knew was that disposable wipes uh, or flushable wipes are not actually flushable. Yes, they might be flushed and they might go down your toilet, but they, but they don't break down. Toilet paper breaks down your poop breaks down by the time it gets to a wastewater treatment plant. Those flushable wipes don't. 
those wipes are in full contact when they get to the wastewater treatment plant and it clogs up their systems, which takes time and energy when they could be spending that working on other parts of the wastewater treatment plant. And they get collected and then thrown into a landfill. So just do them a favor, help them, and dispose of it not in your water supply. I don't care if it says flushable, it's a lie. Uh, or I guess it's not a lie. It is flushable, but it doesn't break down. Uh, so that definitely should not be going in the water. So again, nutrient reduction, properly disposing of chemicals, reducing how much water we use. It's kind of weird, but think about it. You know, if we're using less water, that means the wastewater treatment plant doesn't have as much to treat. So maybe it's a little more effective. But if anything, there's just less water going through the wastewater treatment plant. That's less chemicals going through the wastewater treatment plant. That's less waste going to the wastewater treatment plant. So that means less is entering the environment. Less was taken out of the environment. We're not using as much as we used to. So by doing that, we're in, inadvertently reducing the amount of pollution just because we're reducing the amount of water for us to pollute. Now there's simple ways, ways that you've learned about before. When brushing your teeth, turn the water off. Uh, use a dishwasher and not hand wash them. I have researched this because me and my roommates had an argument about this. Running the dishwasher is more efficient uh, if you're washing your dishes effectively, AKA with warm water and soap. If you're washing one dish at a time and you are letting the water run until it gets warm, again, doing it effectively, cold water does not really help your dishes too much. That actually uses more energy and more water than using a dishwasher. Now you might not recall this, but dishwasher was only about 1% of our water usage, but still, it helps. So those are kind of the obvious ways. Another way that we can reduce our water consumption is taking advantage of the water that literally falls on our heads, uh, rainwater. So this is an example of a rain barrel system. This is a pretty large rain barrel system where this person's gutters, which again, gutters are because water washes off your roof an impervious surface, this person is now collecting that rainwater and putting them into barrels. This water can then be used, usually rain barrel water is used for people who have gardens or want to water their lawn. You could use it for internal uses, but maybe for like your toilet or something. You wouldn't want to drink this water, especially because it was running off of your roof. And depending on your area, there could be some air pollutants that are mixed with that water, but it it's saved, right? You don't have to use your house water to water your plants anymore. And a final example of a way we can reduce our water consumption is actually reusing our water. And this reusage of water is commonly referred to as gray water. Gray water equals a once used water. You may even think of this as dirty water. So this is water that I, I put dirty water in parentheses because it's not it, like it came straight from the river. It has been through the drinking filtration plant. You've gotten it in your home. And so it is clean, but you have used it once before. So for example, in this system here, you have a sink that's getting that fresh water in, fresh brand new water. But then it's draining, so the drain here is at the bottom, it is draining over here, which is this right here. It's draining into the toilet. We are using that sink water to fuel the water in the toilet. So yes, it's dirty water that had your hands and soap and stuff in it, but instead of that immediately going to the wastewater plant, it goes into the toilet. There's different systems in different households, but this is even done at the corporate scale and in industries and in office buildings where, you know, showers might go to the toilet water, dishwashers, laundry machines can go to the toilet water because we don't need our toilet water to be clean. I don't care if there's soap in my toilet water. I don't care if there's like strands of my hair that washed through my shower drain in the water. That's fine. So gray water is this concept of using water one more time and as far as I've seen, it's only been used in our toilet water. I haven't really seen it used for any other kinds of water. Um, but that should make sense because if you're adding soap to this water, 
You don't really want to use it for plants because depending on the soap, it could hurt plants. You don't really want to use your shower water for your like hand water because maybe, I don't know, you were really dirty that day and you don't want to wash your hands in it later. But still, toilets, if you recall, were the number one way Americans use water every day. Of our 90 gallons of water, about a quarter of it went to the toilet. Well, why not use water from everything else we do to fuel that toilet water?